all right everyone welcome back to full circle with joyce and uh right now i do want to invite your feedback and your comments even as we get ready for our second half of the show and today we're going to be talking about as we feature health and wellness we're specifically going to be talking about eradicating jiggers and also uh we're also going to be looking at nutrition and how we can actually begin to prepare healthy meals all right and uh before then let me share our inspirational word for the day today i'm going to be reading from psalm chapter 23 shall be our inspirational word for the day and uh, i'll just read um verse 4 for you even though i walk through the darkest valley i will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me i'll read that again even though i walk through the darkest valley i will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me and i hope that gives encouragement to so many of you out there today perhaps you've really been chugging along really trying to work out on something and it's just not going the way you want it to may god be your rod and your staff may he be with you in that valley and may you always remember that you know what joy always comes in the morning so take heart with that today all right so let me welcome my very first guest this hour she is a very familiar face a lot of you would know her uh her name is cecilia mwangi and she is the director of ahadi trust kenya good to have you here cecilia thanks thanks for having me as well welcome welcome thanks. and um so from locally made low-cost herbal remedies mm -hmm. to affordable hardwood floors for households researchers and communities are developing new ways to deal with jiggers in kenya and that's very exciting news cecilia of course so many of us remember you you know from your modeling days yeah. and you made such a statement with getting onto this cause and and really running with it like it wasn't a one-time thing right what was sort of in your mind then because I, I i don't imagine that this is what you had thought you'd be doing in the long run um well uh first of all when you're joining miss world kenya competition there's one thing that we have the beauty with the papa segment mm -hmm. and when actually when i ran for it i was going for girl child empowerment mm. you know something totally different from yeah. the jiggers just as you said and as you move along as you go into the communities in the rural areas that's when you figure out actually there are much more bigger issues and not like the girl child empowerment is not but i found there's an issue that people are keeping quiet about it and they're embarrassed to talk about and it's actually hurting our children and if not spoken about of people don't know about it's going to hurt a generation mm -hmm. so i decided to be the voice mm -hmm. yeah how did you first encounter jiggers anyways um i come actually my director the other my fellow director the ceo comes from an area in muranga where he had invited us for a christmas party and there were a group of people that sat outside and they did not want to sit with everyone else. They were isolated and mm -hmm. everyone else was just telling them to sit aside. Mm -hmm. So I was just curious, you know, like just asking who are those? Then um, they told the guys with jiggers. Uh, my CEO was not happy about it because of course you wonder why it's Christmas. We should be together, you know, we should be celebrating togetherness. Um, we should be one and mm -hmm. um, they are being isolated and they are feeling they are in the right place. They really do not want to be mingled with everyone else because they are not normal. Mm. So uh, we, we met uh, later, some few, uh, and the following year, some months later, we, he organized a celebrity workshop where he spoke about jiggers. Mm -hmm. And um, I th it was only me and the late King Kong who responded to it. Mm -hmm. And um, we decided to go to the, f to the field, just figure out the magnitude of the problem. Yeah. And we got to realize it's not just the children, it's also the head teachers, it's yeah. also their teachers themselves, it's in the homesteads, wow. it's, it's bigger than we know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, when we look at some of the factors that you would say were promoting that sort of infestation, if mm -hmm. you will, uh, what is it? Because again, we saw that this is very concentrated in specific areas of the right. country. Right. Right. Um, First of all, wherever you find um, poor hygiene, poor sanitation uh, environment, there'll always be jiggers. Mm. 
And also something we also got to realize right after we started off the campaign is wherever there's poverty, you will find jiggers. Mm. Because um, we are living in situations whereby someone does not have a, another set of clothes to change. Yeah. Um, so the clothes they are sleeping on is what they'll, um, they'll have the whole day yeah. and on and on. Yeah. Um, climate change also, there's been a lot of uh, climate uh, changes and uh, people, people actually used to keep cows mm. and the same cows used to be in the deep so they used to go dip their feet at the same time they're dipping oh, their wow. animals. Um, people used to grow coffee in the sides of Moranga which has gone down and the same pesticide they used to spray also they used to spray in their home. So times mm. have changed, lifestyle has changed. As long as they're not growing coffee, they're not keeping cattle, of course their lifestyles also change. Yeah. Um, economically they go down okay. and it contributes to it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. and and. It, it's a, it's it's a deadly sight, right? right. It's, it's it's really hard to watch. I remember right. when we'd be watching you like washing people's feet yeah. and trying to extract. It it's it's hard to watch, and I don't know how <laughs> that was for you now, like like literally front and center, right? Uh, being the one to pull out jiggers from people's feet, it it can really ravage someone. The first few months was um, a bit traumatizing for me, I can say the truth, because uh, right after you wash those feet, some of them are very sore, some of them after after removing the pin leaves an open wound. Mm. It's a bit disturbing mm -hmm. and I could not eat meat for a while. I mean, it was I was not able to digest any meat or any, I mean, just get a bit of the mm. nausea or something. But um, later on, I just, found myself, okay, I really don't want to see this site, what should I do? Yeah. Went to see doctors, I inquired what what is the best remedy that is non-intrusive. I do not have to use a pin and needle and all that. So they told me use um, an antiseptic, okay. um, a liquid, they can just uh, dip their feet in there and then wash it and within two weeks apply petroleum jelly, they are gone. Oh really? Yes. With no incisions, no at all. extractions. Yeah, or at all. Because that's that's uh, that's what traditionally that used to be done. But with modern times, uh, at least we are getting better chemicals, better medication that that is not harmful to the foot, but still removes the jiggers anyway. Okay. So that's the some of the remedies I had. Kenya Trust has been coming up with, yeah. and also uh, together with the Ministry of Health, we are doing the same. Okay. Yeah. Well done. Mm -hmm. So the term tungiasis is used a lot in your area of yeah. work. <laughs> Tell us what that is. <laughs> How it's wow. It, it sounds so <laughs> scientific. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, tungiasis comes from. Um, uh, tunga penetra, that is a jigger, that's the scientific word, tunga penetra. And uh, it is the skin, the way it is inflamed when the jigger is inside your foot. I'm sure if you see a foot that has jiggers, is inflamed, mm -hmm. it looks like there's something in there, mm -hmm. those are jigger eggs. So tungiasis is that inflamed skin yeah. um, caused by the tunga penetra, that's a jigger. Mm -hmm. And how do you go about it? Just clean it and uh, once you disinfect your foot inside the, 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 the disinfectant or antiseptic, what happens, it suffocates the jigger in the foot. So mm. instead of you removing it uh, physically, it suffocates, it dies, and it comes off. So okay. it drops off like and becomes just uh, heals like a normal wound. Okay. Yeah. And what about the eggs? Do they also just die off? Yeah. Once you soak the feet, it's like the way we do pedi. Mm -hmm. You only see when you're going for pedi, you you soak the feet, and yeah. when you soak, they actually it's like uh, helps the dead skin come, come off, off easily. Yeah. So it's the same thing. Okay. So once you put in an antiseptic, um, and you know they are sucking up the blood in your foot, mm -hmm. you know, because it's buried in your foot or in your hand. So um, once you dip, they come, they kind of like swallow that medication okay. and they die. Okay. So also the same thing, the environment cannot allow such eggs to prevail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, for those who may be wondering, do jiggers only affect the feet? Um, no. It affects anywhere we have soft tissues, the knees, the ankles. The knees? Uh, yeah. That must be very uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable. The back at times, you find um, the elderly people who are immobile because they sit in one place. So you find even in the behind they yeah. have. Yeah. So yeah. anywhere that we have soft tissues, possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you're assessing some of sort of the worst cases that you've seen, uh, of this, you know, first of all, how long you've said with the antiseptic treatment, it will take like two weeks two to weeks. treat. Right. But um, what are some of the worst cases you can recall of, of jigger infestation and what it does to you know, a person and their human body? 
Um, when we were starting off the Jika campaign around 2009, we actually buried a, a five-year-old boy. Really? Yeah, because um, uh, he was infected HIV and AIDS oh, no. through the pin removal of the jigger. Oh. And you know, you'll find in the homesteads at home, it's the work of the mother mm -hmm. to remove jiggers on either the children and the husband. Mm -hmm. So the same pin they use at home, mm -hmm. the same needle that they use on the kids and the same needle they use on the parents. So wow. the boy contracted HIV and AIDS. So we buried a five-year-old boy at that time around 2009. Um, we've also seen scenarios whereby it actually destabilizes someone mentally mm. because it sucks up the blood in you. So kind of slowness as well. Mm. Uh, someone disengages in society completely. Wow. Um, of course, immobility, uh, sometimes it leads to amputating of the foot. Wow. So someone who was walking, who's very okay, now uh, transformed to be a disabled. So right. it's, it has all those effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but mm -hmm. worst case scenario was the day, I mean, and that's the time I decided, you know what, I'm really going loud about it. I really do not want to hear what these politicians are saying because they were against me speaking about the jiggers because it's embarrassing them. Yeah. Um, the day we buried that small boy. Wow. Yeah. Politicians were standing against you. Of course. I mean, um, you know, it shows that um, your area is neglected. It shows that your people are living um, poorly in a poor condition. Yeah. And uh, you're there, you have some fans probably from the CDF or you are their leader. What are you doing about right. it? Yeah. So it puts them on the spot. Have they stepped up their game since? Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, after 2010 onwards, they all came on board and um, we work very cordially, even with the county governments right now. Mm -hmm. They have embraced the campaign because you get to realize you cannot hide the jigger menace. You yeah. cannot hide the jigger foot. You cannot hide a child who's suffering from jiggers. Mm -hmm. So um, they've embraced, the county governments have embraced, government have embraced. So that's why we're working hand in hand with the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, because it needs a lot of um, sensitivity in schools yeah and um, churches have also come on board so it's actually I'm happy that I spoke about it I mm -hmm. created so much awareness and um, it has been embraced Bes uh, um, besides having all the issues of course when starting up mm -hmm. um, and right now we even have um, modern medicine taking care of it yeah because it was a backward problem people were laughing about jiggers but mm -hmm. at least we have mm -hmm. modern medicine mm -hmm. and and we are actually as a Hadi Kenya trust we are planning on having um a museum so oh, wow. yeah a jigger museum so you see the entire cycle of how the jigger is from the way it's uh, from an egg gets too big and, and how just a cycle yeah yeah and I mean listening to that story about the young boy who who unfortunately died uh, his mother may be very lovingly trying to take away Correct. a jigger but Correct. didn't I guess realize or understand that she was also putting him at risk for Correct. HIV right. um, you how how and you've talked already about education and um, awareness yeah. but um how much education now programs awareness is are you and the ministry of health now doing um to empower and enlighten these communities mm -hmm. about you know because that that in in many ways for us today should mm -hmm. be basic education right correct. don't share needles correct but you can't assume that in a grassroots area yeah. in a rural no. area yeah so are you now incorporating a lot of those talk to us about the education programs basically um, that you're working on now there is one program we have uh we are working on with the ministry of uh, education on hygiene clubs in schools i'm sure um I, okay i don't know if you're in the same age bracket with me but when <laughs> when we were in school we had um uh, hygiene clubs mm -hmm. so introducing it at the same time and uh ensuring we are impacting the information about uh, proper hygiene um taking a bath take i mean like brushing your teeth um, just ensuring you're know, keeping feet clean because also the environment in schools sprinkle some water because we know the environment um, the floor in the classrooms are dusty and uh, jiggers or the eggs of the jiggers thrive very well in dusty areas yeah. um, if you're living in a mud house um, there's cow dung just um, just cleaning right around in the walls and all that so there's that going on at the grassroots level okay yeah 
And then there's also now the Ministry of Health, whereby community health workers or county health workers are working with us, um, going round homes where we have giga infested uh, kids and mm -hmm. families okay. and giving them medication and sensitization. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to take a short break now, Cecilia, but we'll be back with her, guys, uh, in just a few moments as we continue this discussion on eradicating jiggers. Stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. I'm here with Cecilia Mwangi, who's the director of Ahadi Trust. Of course, former Miss World Kenya, now doing uh, amazing things in the world of philanthropy. Good to have you here you. once again. Um, and of course, we've been talking about eradicating jiggers. And one of the things that Cecilia has pointed out to us is, you know, this is really... A, a poverty issue at the end of the day right and so I'm very curious to find out you know what sort of strides have we made so far this is now 12, 12 years, years or so right. since uh, you began this work you know how are we doing what would be your assessment um, when we started tackling the jiggers we realized it's going to be a full circle mm -hmm. uh, going from creating awareness to treatment to prevention and now sustaining the project mm -hmm. so um, we've spoken about the awareness part, we are, uh, how, how we are intervening, we are treating people. Mm -hmm. And then of course, preventive measures, we have been giving out shoes. Uh, we, are, we have a Fukuza Funza na Kiatu campaign whereby we have distributed about 8 million pairs of shoes to date in oh, Kenya. Nice. And it's free of charge. Wow. So well regardless done. whether you have jiggers or not, every child gets a shoe wherever Hadi okay. Kenya goes. Mm -hmm. Um, thereafter, we have also been carrying out empowerment projects for parents, mm -hmm. whereby as long as you are treated off the jiggers, let's get you an, uh, an economic activity. Wow. Because we get to realize uh, we do not want to step out as a hadi and you go back to the same environment sure. and jiggers re reoccur. Sure. So we've had quite a number of empowerment projects that we have been supporting our our patients that we have supported mm -hmm. uh, one of them is and this one I love so much it, I am passionate about it uh, we have a banana plantation banana farm like a five acre farm yeah. whereby um, people who we treated off jiggers thereafter we got a farm a donate a farm donated by a well-wisher he told wow. us use this farm use it uh, help these people mm -hmm. um, so each and every person where we designated like um, a part of the farm to five 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 uh, men, women, and it's it came out. I mean, uh, I went down. I went there after like um, I, a month or two after we already launched the banana plantation, mm -hmm. and we found they actually value added and planted watermelon. They had mm. planted sweet potatoes. They had planted um, arrowroot stuff yes. that they eat. Yes. And then um, with the banana plantation, once we harvested, we were able to get a factory that took took all those bananas so they were buying bananas from the farm oh, well and then thereafter making potato chips making matoke and all that yeah. uh, selling it for matoke in the farm and whatever proceedings that they get goes directly to their account because well they opened done. accounts as well, well so done. at least they're able to earn something mm -hmm. and they can actually see um uh, it's actually the jiggers that are impeding them from doing everything yeah, normal day-to-day -day work exactly so um, uh, that's one testimonial we i mean when you come to offices we'll give you some chips but i mean like that, um, these banana chips that we yeah. make from the plantation okay. farm it's awesome there um, and different places have different activities there okay. are places where we've given chicken mm -hmm. um they rear chicken we give them incubate they yeah. hatch eggs, there are places where we keep rabbits, yeah. um, places where we use, depending on the area, okay. uh, coconut plantation, they weave and they sell. So, All right. awesome. so numbers wise, are you able to tell us, you know, we've gone from this number to this number, perhaps? Uh, when we started off, we mapped about 2.5 million people affected by jiggers in Kenya. Uh, not there yet, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because um, there's a lot more, but yeah, sure. we, we, are, we are about 40%. 
Well done. Yes, yes. Well done. You've done at least 40% on treatment, on prevention, and right. sustainability. And them is the, the sustainable yes, aspect, correct. particularly. Correct. I think it's something that you should absolutely Thanks. celebrate. Very Thank impressive, you. Cecilia. Yeah. And I think a lot of our audience is quite impressed as well. Um, I have here, wow, congratulations to the girl for the good thing she is doing <laughs> together with her boss, Dr. Kamau, uh, or a direct co-partner co there. Uh, may God bless them and expand their boundaries. That's someone watching us Thank from to my Nyandara County, uh, that's Kamau Gitari. Someone else here says, Hello, Joyce Tundin Kamakawa. Congratulations to Cecilia for a job well done. God bless her. Uh, someone here says, You're doing good work. Congratulations. Jiggers really affects us back in Mpeketoni. How yeah. waduduni hatari sana. That's Collins. Uh, Although you're watching from Pika Kiganjo, Asante. I don't know if there's a Mpeketoni in yeah. Pika Kiganjo. I, 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 I thought is. Mpeketoni is in Lamu. In, in, yeah, Lamu. I, also it was <laughs> I don't know but if it's in Pika. Yeah. Um, someone else here says, first, let me commend her for the good work and the guts to be a hero. Alafu, um, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let me let me save that. You and Tamuliza private. Kianani. Hey, Nini. Focus. 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 <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, Cecilia, let's carry on. Yeah. You had mentioned, I want to talk about the preventative measures, okay? And uh, what role our policymakers are playing in this? How is government stepping into it as well? Uh, and specifically, because you mentioned something quite interesting, that uh, the prevention, you can't hide the jigger menace once it's out there. No. Here we are talking about physical um, issues and impalements. We're also talking about mental impact. Uh, but then the prevention, how can we... What is being done, I guess, to prevent the jigger menace now? Okay. Um, the government has been very supportive on the jigger, anti jigger campaign. Mm -hmm. And um, in 2016, we actually launched, we, together with the First Lady uh, of Kenya, Margaret Kenyatta, we launched the jigger policy mm -hmm. by the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. So right now, there is a policy uh, by government how to tackle the jigger menace in Kenya. Initially, mm -hmm. it was just us coming up with different remedies and all that, but at least there's a uh, laid down policy by the ministry on how to tackle the jigger menace in Kenya, which was not existing. Because even um, when we're starting talking about jiggers, people wondering, uh, what's that? How do you go about it? Mm -hmm. um, the same thing. And the more we move into it, it's like, we, we started like a startup. We were learning on it mm. because personally, I'm not uh, into in, in the medical field. Yeah. Um, neither is Dr. Kamau. So we were learning on it. And the more we, we engaged, the more we intervened, the more we got remedies and solutions. Mm -hmm. But preventive measures, um, of course, the shoe, the shoe campaign, yeah. of course, keeping the environment clean mm -hmm. and ensuring um, good and good hygiene standards are yeah. kept in the homestead plus in schools mm -hmm. because schools are also big breeding grounds for sure. um, for jiggers thereafter um, ensuring also we impact the education the sensitization uh, by by teachers to the children also in, by chiefs in the barazas wherever they go they speak to parents they talk mm -hmm. about it and of course we cannot forget about the economic empowerment yeah that will change everything absolutely because jiggers are social economic problem absolutely yeah. And, you know, I, it's, it's very impressive just hearing all that you've done. And, you know, you came from being Miss World Kenya, which in itself is an accomplishment. Um, and then taking on board this thing. And I, I think what most Kenyans uh, really commend you for is that this wasn't just a PR thing. No. Um, you've stuck with this for yeah. 12 years now. And I really want you to speak to a lot of the people who are watching right now. Um, as far as fame and and celebrity status and how it's not about ourselves really those are platforms that you're blessed right. to have them right. right and i always like to say i'm blessed to be a blessing so yeah. what am i doing with the giftings and the platforms right. that i've been given so talk to us about how you're using and just that journey of using your influence to actually cause impact um what i can encourage um, the young people out there is to live a purpose life, you know, at least have some purpose in life. Mm -hmm. And regardless of the talent that you have, uh, you could be um, communicating through music, mm -hmm. through arts, mm -hmm. through modeling, mm -hmm. um, and you impact the society in some way, one way or another. Mm -hmm. I decided to use the platform for modeling to impact the society. And you know, 
one, this is a beauty queen, and we are talking about jiggers, which is associated to dirt, associated to poverty, associated yeah. to any negative thing that you'll think about, and um, a beauty queen yeah. on one side, elegance, all that. So yeah. it's important, whatever that you pursue as a talent, um, it should at least impact society in one way or another. Mm -hmm. And also something, be consistent mm. um, in, in, in your in your purpose mm -hmm. you know uh, because you find you want to do so many things just do what do you and do what makes you comfortable yeah you cannot be anyone else even if i wanted to sing i would not sing like <laughs> you for the world i do that within but um i'm i'm good in modeling advertising and all that yeah. so may this face be of help to someone else yeah 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 Absolutely. Well done. Well done, Cecilia. Now, someone here is asking how they can know if they have jiggers. Ah, well, uh, once in a while I visit um, rural areas and I come up with one, actually. Okay. You feel very itchy wherever the, the, the flea has gotten into. So okay. It's very itchy. And uh, the more you itch, it feels really nice. Uh -huh. But it's just digging in deep. Yeah. Um, one if you have them, if it's one of them, you can just go, when you go for a pedi or something, or you dip your feet inside an antiseptic, mm -hmm. it dies. Okay. The same remedy we use everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's just common antiseptic that can be found in the shelves. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it's not too expensive to treat. No. At the end no. of the day, like you're saying, it's about our hygiene. Correct. And really taking care of our yes. spaces. So someone who showers every day, cleans up, uh, clean clothes, mm -hmm. uh, the beddings, because wherever you find jiggers, you'll find bed bugs, you'll find lice. Wow. So it's if you keep high, all perfect hygiene, or good hygiene, all that is yeah, out. Yeah, it should be taken yeah. care of. Yeah. Okay, now tell us about Jigger Day. This is something, again, initiated under you and Ahadi yeah. Trust. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, all along we've been uh, about, this is a second year we are celebrating the Jiga Day and uh, on the 31st of March it was gazetted in Kenya that we, ce we celebrate the Jiga Day, anti-Jiga Day in Kenya. Nice. And what does this mean to, um, to people in Kenya? It's just ensuring hygiene standards are kept mm -hmm. yeah? and you reach out to someone out there, your neighbor, whoever it is, just mm -hmm. to reach out to them, support them, even in schools, have it like just, I mean, at least on that day, uh, clean up the places mm -hmm. and also spread the word about poor, poor um, um, a good hygiene mm -hmm. um, around your community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a good day. Yeah. And if you, what are some of the other programs as well then with the Ahadi Trust? Well, we've had quite a number. We've had. <laughs> Uh, Boresha, Macho, uh, Boresha Macho campaign, whereby we know anyone who's um, psych uh, not uh, um, the sight is impaired, mm -hmm. they are not able to see where the jigger is, mm. and that is with the elderly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you find uh, it affects mostly children who are vulnerable and yeah. the elderly who are not able to see where the jigger mm. is. So um, there's a campaign where we have Boresha Macho um, campaign, whereby we give elderly people spectacles wow. yeah so we did a, an eye clinic uh, treated them and gave them spectacles at least they're able to see around yeah. them uh, we also have um, of course Fukuza Funza in a campaign mm -hmm. then we also have um, an innovation um, ambulance machinani mm. I don't know if you've seen it mm -hmm. it's like a tuk-tuk ambulance yes, whereby, <laughs> <laughs> whereby uh, s uh, people who are highly infested yeah they can be put on the ambulance and counties um, embraced it very well they take them to the county the nearest county health facility for treatment mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so there's so much more but you can check us out on uh, jiga uh, org. you'll find everything that you've done absolutely yeah. and that's good because someone is asking uh rispa uh, Ngendo is asking how can one reach the Ahadi Trust Foundation she'd love to get involved in eradicating jiggers in, in her society yeah. is it just that website? Yes the same website we have a tab where we have volunteers so you can sign up as a volunteer okay. so wherever we go out we'll reach out to you and if it's in we'd like to involve you in your area of location right. so if it's in Nairobi, Nyandarua, Kisumu we reach out to you because we have social workers all around the country mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. alright uh, Philly tuned in from Kisumu says 
says, God bless her beautiful soul abundantly. Someone here says, good morning, Joyce. Really good work being done. And uh, sis, uh, Larry from Kiambu says, hi to Cecilia and tell her to continue with the good work uh very great comments there and feedback to you uh cecilia monkey of course um director of ahadi trust kenya doing amazing things here in the country very inspiring how you. you've used your giftings and i really do want to appreciate your time thanks. Uh, for coming through thanks to for full having me here as well yeah. <laughs> all right guys we're going to take a short break but when we come back we're now going to switch over to nutrition and talk about some of the healthy meals you can prepare for yourself and your loved ones this and so much more right here on full circle with joyce